Today on Formula J, we'll be testing out a plasma cutter. Today we have the Yes Welder Cut 65 DS. This thing runs on 110 or 220, and they claim at max power it can cut up to 5 inch thick. Uh, we're gonna push that. We have some one inch steel. We're gonna see uh, how well this thing can cut. So without me yapping anymore, let's get some cutting. So those first cuts were on eighth inch material. We used 20 amps. Uh, we're gonna bump it up a little bit, 25 amps on some 316s. So we were either a little bit too low on power or a little bit too fast with our hand because uh, most of that, that slag built up on the bottom and it didn't completely uh, sever that piece, but towards the end of it, we got it clean cut. Uh, let's try that again with 30 amps. So you saw that cut left a little bit of slag on the metal and that very well could be me not knowing what the hell I'm doing. Um, also it could be just playing with a couple of the settings. Like I said, that was 30 amps. We got the air set where they uh, tell us to. So we're gonna go on to some thicker metal now. now here's a 3 8 cut at 40 amps and a reminder that we are still on 240 volts. All right, same cut, 3 8 steel, 50 amps. We got the machine maxed out now, 65 amps. So you saw that 3 8 cut at 65 amps, 220 volts, which is the max output of this machine. So we've now bumped up to half inch. We might have to go a little bit slower. We're gonna see if this thing can make it all the way through. Did it, hell yeah. All righty, it made it across the half inch just fine. So now to see where this thing will end up failing, we have these lines marked across this tapered piece of steel. We're just gonna start making cuts uh, at a small height and start just getting thicker and thicker until uh, we run out of ability with this cutter. That last cut was made on a three quarter inch rod at the max and it made it all the way through. Yes Water claims that they can cut through with that 
plasma cutter at max condition uh, through a 5 8 piece of material cleanly, 5 8 clean cut. And like I said, 3 quarter inch, it made it through, left a little bit of uh, junk at the bottom, a little bit of slag at the bottom. Um, but yeah, I mean, about 5 8 of that is cleanly cut. So this machine did live up to what they say it can. For a final stress test, we're gonna take this up to a one inch bar. Right here measures one inch. We're gonna see at the same 220 volts, 65 amps, if the machine can uh, do a severance cut. Yes Welder claims through 15 sixteenths is their maximum. Uh, and we're gonna test that and see what this thing can do. And there you have it. Uh, it lived up to exactly what they say it can do. Uh, they claim 15 sixteenths. I uh, just about made it through this one inch. You saw the slag collecting at the bottom. Uh, we knocked it free with a hammer, but I'm impressed. Like I said, 220 volts, 65 amps. That was the absolute max that this machine can do. But hey, it did it. Now that we're done cutting, let's talk a little bit more about the features and specifications of this machine. So from Yes Welder, it comes capable of 110 volts or 220 volt input. Uh, the cuts you just saw were done at 220, which is obviously the most it can do. And at 220 volts, it can cut up to 65 amps. And at 110, it can cut up to 40 amps. At either configuration, the duty cycle is rated at 60%. Out of the box, you'll get obviously the welder, you'll get a torch and a ground clamp. In addition, you'll get a pressure regulator, a pressure gauge, a small clear hose to connect the regulator to the welder, and this little pressure check gauge. More on that later. Setup is very simple. You just connect the leads onto the front of the machine. On the left side goes the torch with the two wires leading from the torch. And then on the right side goes your ground clamp. On the back of the machine, simply mount the regulator and put the pressure gauge on the outside of that regulator. On the left side, your air input screws in, and on the right side, a fitting goes in to connect the clear hose from the pressure regulator to the cutter. If you're confused about which side is which, just look at this arrow to tell the direction of airflow. Once you're set up, then you can adjust your airflow using the pressure regulator on the back of the cutter. First, you're going to put the machine into the air check mode you do that by pressing the button on the bottom center of that panel. And what that will do is it'll turn it off of the cutting mode and it'll send air through the nozzle of the torch. So right now we have compressed air coming through the torch. Sorry, my air compressor just kicked up, so it's probably hard to hear. But you're going to take your check, your gauge, and put it on the tip of the torch and adjust your regulator until the ball sits in the middle of this red zone. So my air is a little bit low right now. We had set it prior. Uh, but yeah, that's all you do to set it up. Also on the front of the panel is a 2T versus 4T cutting mode switch. And what that basically means is when you're cutting 2T mode, when you pull the trigger and you hold the trigger on the torch, it will cut as soon as you let go of that trigger, it stops cutting. On 4T mode, you actually pull and release the trigger to initiate the cut, and it doesn't stop cutting until you then pull and release the trigger again. So they both work just fine. Uh, I personally prefer 2T, just what I'm used to, but either one works great. Also on that front panel, 
you'll see a knob, which allows you to select between those four LEDs on the front. The first one is the max pilot arc time. The second one is the pilot arc current between 12 and 25 amps. The third one is the plasma cutting current between 10 and 65 amps. And the last one is the post flow time between five and 20 seconds. As for air compressors, they don't really tell you what exactly you need in order to power this thing. Uh, but we're using a two horsepower air compressor that's rated at 7.9 SCFM at 40 PSI, which is not a whole lot, but we are yet to completely run out of air, even with continuous cutting. I mean, our compressor will start to kick in, obviously once it gets down low, but so far our air compressor has not been a limitation. One important note on the torch is that this is not a high frequency start machine. Uh, typically, a high frequency machine would send a high frequency pulse in order to initiate the arc. This machine does not work that way. It's more of a mechanical design called blowback, where it actually uses a spring to initiate the arc. As far as which one's better, well, for regular cutting, they both work just fine. Um, I don't really have a preference of one over the other. I've used both, and they both seem to work just fine. But I know if you do intend on using this for a CNC setup that people have had issues with high frequency start plasma cutters um, interfering with their electronics and getting all sorts of electromagnetic interference um, on their CNC on their stepper motors or whatever the case so in order to avoid that they came out with a mechanical design like I said blowback uh, which is what this torch is so if you do intend on using this with a CNC table uh, this is really what you want to go with. Final impressions of this plasma cutter. I'm actually pretty impressed. It cut through everything that they claimed it could. And then some, like I said, we made it just about all the way through that one inch piece of steel, which is pretty impressive. Uh, and so far, everything that we've tried to cut, uh, it's, it's met or exceeded my expectations. And for 500 bucks, you really can't go wrong, especially with the ability to run it on either 110 or 220. So all in all, it's a really good package. Um, if you enjoyed this video, uh, please like, comment, and subscribe. And uh, you can find a link in our description. We appreciate the support, and we will see you guys next time. Thanks.